Previously, we talked about an atom being electrically neutral. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. It turns out that atoms don't remain that way. Metals have a tendency to lose electrons, at least one electron, maybe more than one electron. When a metal loses electrons, it has a net positive charge, and the positive ion is called a cation. The opposite happens for nonmetals. They tend to gain electrons, at least one, maybe more. When they form a negatively charged ion because they have extra electrons, more electrons than positive protons, we call them anions. And you can use the periodic table to predict what kind of charge, whether it's a cation or an anion, and whether it's going to gain or lose one, two, or three, however many electrons it's either going to gain or lose. So first let's look at the metals. Metals are either main group or they're transition metals. The main groups on the periodic table are the first two columns and then the last six columns. So 1 and 2 and 13 through 18. We'll talk about the other, the transition metals later on. Main group metals tend to form cations that have the same charge as whatever the last digit of the group number is. So for example, magnesium is in group number 2. The last digit of 2 is 2. So a magnesium neutral atom will form a magnesium ion with a positive 2 charge, so it's a magnesium cation, and it does that by losing 2 electrons. Aluminum is also a main group metal. It's in group number 13. The last digit of 13 is 3, so an aluminum atom will tend to lose 3 electrons and form a positive 3 cation. Nonmetals form an anion that has the charge equal to the last digit of the group number minus 8. And when you look on the periodic table, you'll see that all nonmetals are in the main group on the periodic table. An oxygen is found in the periodic table in group 16. The last digit 6 minus 8 gives you a negative 2. So that means an oxygen atom will gain 2 electrons and form a negative 2 anion. Bromine is found in group 17 and 7 minus 8 shows you that a bromine will gain just 1 electron and form an anion with a negative 1 charge. We can use this fact to calculate the formula of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are made up of two or more elements. We're going to look at compounds that only contain two elements. And each one of those neutral atoms has been turned in e into either a cation or an anion. And we can figure out the formula because the overall charge on an ionic compound must be neutral. You're always going to write the cation first and the anion second. So we can take the charge of magnesium that we just saw is a positive 2 and the bromine is a negative 1. Usually a negative 1 is written like this and we don't write the number 1 when it's either a cation or an anion, but to emphasize this I'm going to write one negative. In order to make a neutral compound we can do a little crisscross. Turn, this subs turn the superscripts into subscripts and that's going to tell us that it takes one magnesium to neutralize two bromines. A subscript of one is not written so we rewrite the formula as just Mg and then Br subscript 2. So this would be a neutral ionic compound. Similar sort of thing with magnesium paired up with an oxygen anion with a negative 2 charge. 
do the crisscross and you end up with two magnesiums neutralizing two oxygens. But for this type of compound, ionic compounds, you want to simplify the formula. A 2 to 2 ratio is neutral, but it's not the simplest form. That can be reduced by dividing both of them by 2, and you get one magnesium for every one oxygen.